Hello YouTube fans, welcome back to the AJ Speed Shop YouTube channel. Today we're going to be discussing digital dash installations in G bodies. And today there's quite a few digital dash options out. Of course, Holly makes the Pro Dash. Uh, DDEFI has their new 12.3 inch touchscreen Pro Dash out. Autometer has got a custom dash out. And there's quite a few other options out there. Um, but the one we're going to be discussing today is the DDEFI 12.3 inch touchscreen Pro Dash. And this unit is designed to work with MS3 Pro ECUs, anything that's mega squirt based, this dash will work with them. Uh, my particular car has an ECU GN, which has an MS3 Pro processor in it. And so this dash was works excellent with what I have. Now I did work in conjunction with the DDEFI guys for the development of the fitment uh, and making it work with their custom bezel for uh, Turbo Regals. So anyway, let me get in the car and uh, show you a few things. And we're gonna go over some of the snafus that you're gonna come across when installing a digital dash into a G body. There is a, su a few supporting mods that you're going to have to do to make these things work and have all the other systems in the car working as well. So let's get in the car and check it out. Okay guys. What you're looking at here is the 12.3 inch touchscreen DDEFI digital dash. This is the touchscreen version. And this, uh, this particular dash is designed to run on the CAN bus system from your ECU. So that means that this thing will be communicating back and forth with your ECU floating on the CAN bus network. This dash is completely customizable. This particular layout that you're looking at, I kind of designed it myself uh, based off of the layout that comes with a ECU GN um, that uh, Eric from Turbo Tweak designed. I just kind of made it a little more user friendly for something you could drive in every day. And I do have a couple of other layouts that I made, something um, just unique, more conversation pieces, but still usable. Let me show you some of those. This is my 80s theme dash. This dash was loosely based on the mid 80s Corvette, C4 Corvette digital dashes. Um, but I thought it was cool. I thought it was unique for car shows and stuff like that. So I did adapt it for um, use in a Turbo Buick and, and put all the key stuff in there that we need to make this dash work and be fully functional. So it's, it's pretty unique. And this particular layout is more of a, a race style or race themed layout. This would be good for if you're making highway pulls and stuff like that. It's got minimal information, but it does have the key stuff that you need. Um, I don't really use it that much, but every now and then I'll, I'll flash over to that. And this is a performance metric layout. And this thing basically is kind of like having some timing systems built into the dash. Um, it will you know, basically utilize the ECU information and, and create, um, uh, recordable metrics for, you know, your zero to 60 and stuff like that. Kind of like having a draggy, but probably just not near as accurate. This is the one I primarily use all the time. It's the, it's the easiest one for me to see. It's got the most important data on it. Um, you can see everything I've got here. You can tell when your AC is cycling on and off, your fans are cycling on and off. Just a real neat unit. Now, mine was actually a pre-production unit. So you're going to notice that I have some LEDs uh, here and another set of LEDs over here. Um, this was before we had integrated the turn indicators and the high beam light and the brake light fail uh, light into the actual tablet itself. So um, now the new production models, they won't have those lights. It's all integrated into the dash itself. Uh, but for mine, this is how we did it early on, and it works. Um, you can tell here when we activate the stuff. It's kind of simple down. Um, the DDEFI guys offered me an upgrade um, to go to a newer style with the, um, the integrated uh, indicators. But this one works for me, so I'm good with it. Now, there's a few things that you do need to know in regards to running these dashes in Turbo Buicks for sure, but I'm quite sure it falls suit with Malibu's and Monte Carlo SS's as well. First thing is the alternator. 
And I talked about this yesterday in a video. I uploaded it. And it's in regards to the fact that you're losing the factory volt bulb light. Uh, basically, it's a factory charge light that was an idiot light that tells tells you when your, your alternator is not charging. Well, that same light also tells the alternator to start charging. Well, now that the factory cluster is gone, you've lost that. So you have to find a workaround for that. I've got a whole video that I just uploaded yesterday dedicated to that alone. So please go check that video out. It's really the most important thing that you have to figure out when you're going to an aftermarket cluster, whether you're doing a digital dash or a GNX dash or uh, any type of analog gauges, you're still going to have the same problem. You're going to have to figure out how to get around not having that volt light to start your alternator charging. Next thing that you have to look into is your speedometer. So all the modern dashes now offer GPS-based speedometers, and they work great. However, there's one thing that you need to know. Those particular GPS-based speedometers are not sending a signal to the factory cruise control module for your cruise control to work. Therefore, if you are not using the factory cable-driven speedometer, which ties into a buffer module behind the dash that creates a certain pulse width signal for your cruise control module, your cruise control will not work. And this also affects your torque converter lockup. So there's, that's one thing you got to think about. Now, Casper's Electronics does have a conversion box out now that converts your speedometer cable signal or your converter, your cable speed into the correct pulse width that is needed for a Turbo Buick ECU. And it's supposed to still maintain the cruise control functionality and the torque converter lockup functionality. Uh, for me, what I ended up doing is I took the stock Buick gauge cluster apart. I removed the speedometer uh, mechanism that also housed the optic light. And the optic light is, in, is encompassed into a little box. It's got a spinning uh, blade in there. And that, that, that optic light across that spinning blade creates a pulse. And that pulse signals what's sent to the buffer module and in turn makes the cruise control work. So basically what I did is I, I gutted out the stock cluster and reinstalled just the speedometer mechanism itself behind the pro dash. And I built a little, I built a little box for it to encompass it, to capture the optic light as it shoots across the blade as it's spinning. And, um, it works pretty well. Uh, my cruise control works, my speedometer works. Uh, I don't have a lockup torque converter in this car as of right now, but I will be soon. And so that functionality will still work. So that's one of the second things that you've got to really look into when you start to do this, because a lot of these things are not advertised with these dash companies because they're not familiar with the ins and outs of G-body functionality. They just know how to make gauges and plug them in and make them work. So let me uh, start this thing up here and uh, let you take a look at how it looks. very distinct look it's very visible especially at night these layouts that I have here I have made myself these do not come with the layouts from DDEFI they do send um, some base layouts they have one that's a GNX uh, gauge cluster base that looks very reminiscent to the original uh, GNX clusters that's what they send them out with um, especially for the turbo Buick guys um, but you can, there's tons of uh, layouts you can get online. Most of them you can download for free. You can make them yourself. There's a lot of options. You can really do a lot of stuff with these things. Um, you can start your ECU data logging literally by touching the dash right here. It's got a lot of neat stuff. You never really have to have your laptop with you in the car. This dash does data log straight from the ECU. You can enter the fuel tables. 
you can basically anything you can do with your laptop, you can do with this dash. I have a mini keyboard that is synced to this sync to this dash via Bluetooth. Let me see if I can get a shot of this for you right here. And this da this little uh, keyboard has got a mouse built into it and it allows you to navigate uh, through all of the uh, all the, the functionality of the dash. So it's really cool. You really don't need to have a laptop with you uh, anymore once you run this style of dash. And you, the dash has got its own expansion module. It's basically, a, it's, basically its own ECU. Um, or for lack of a better term, it's own laptop. It's not just a tablet that displays data. Um, it, it's ran on the um, Unix, I believe, uh, operating system. So it actually stores stuff. You can store pictures on this thing, log files. You can do basically everything you can do with a cheap laptop. You can do it with this dash. Very cool. Show you the old 80s dash here. over here to the track dash as I like to call it and back to what I call my home dash There's just a lot of functionality that makes these things really beneficial besides just displaying data. I mean, literally you could pull over into the side of the road and get into your tune and make a change or download a trouble code. If you had a trouble code pop up and you could go in there and see what it was, you could clear it out. Uh, it's basically just like having a laptop with you all the time. And uh, most of the other dash options are not like that these days. Most of them just display data. They may have a few screens that you can change through but this one actually links you to the ECU. It's just really cool. Get you a quick shot of the bezel. Let's see if I can get around here. It's definitely not an OEM look on the bezel. So if you're expecting something to look completely stock, this, this bezel is not it. This was... Um, basically designed to properly mount this screen because the expansion module is so big on the back of this this tablet that they use so it's a uh, it's a pretty big unit and it, it's it is a tight fit behind the dash um, especially once you put the speedometer mechanism back there to uh, make everything work for the cruise control and the torque converter lockup but it's a very cool unit You'll have some things you'll have to work through with getting your gas gauge working correctly. Um, the guys from DDEFI, Curtis and Steven, those guys will really go out of their way to help you get it dialed in on your car. I'm going to put a link to those guys at the end of the video so you guys can uh, check them out and definitely hit them up. Uh, those guys were able to remote into my ECU and remote into my dash through my Wi-Fi in my house to actually help me program this thing with the options that I wanted to have active. Um, they do send it to you already pre-set up for your use, but I had a lot of changes I wanted to make and these guys can basically log into this thing and I can watch them working on my dash as I just sit here. I can see them toggling around through there and, and fixing everything that we need to fix. So the support from those guys is excellent. So if you guys have any other questions or replies in regards to getting one of these dashes in and making them work or just how the dashes function themselves, definitely reply in the comments below. Hit me up with any questions you have. And uh, if I can't help you, I will definitely get you in touch with the people that can. Once again, this particular dash is for mega squirt ECUs only. So Anything that's got any type of mega squirt ECU, this dash will work. If you have a, um, a Holly EFI system on your car, then you probably need to stick with the Holly EFI dash. 
If you like the content that I brought you today, please click like, please subscribe, and definitely please share. I need to get as many shares as I can to get this channel up and running. And I want to do my best to bring you very useful content. And we're going to start doing some fun stuff here at the end of the week. I've got a dyno video that you guys are going to want to see. It'll be dropping Friday. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.